Hey guys, so I was just here um, shooting our video for the new uh, tilt arm extensions for the tilt of gravity and um, some of you might know that I had been uh, testing out the tilt of gravity at the uh, rental house last week with lots of different cameras and so I figured instead of writing a very long drawn out post I can just talk at the camera for a few minutes and get across most of my experiences with the gimbal at the rental house with the heavier cameras so basically um, you're gonna see here in a few seconds I'll post uh, I'll, I'll edit in some of the video that I shot at uh, Radiant Images that was uh, nice enough to let me hang out there for a couple hours and grab a bunch of cameras but um, basically what you're gonna see is that I was in fact able to mount a quite a big variety of large builds on the on the tilt of gravity and um, you'll see from the videos that they, it actually works. It still responds. So the, the claim to fame for the Tilta is a 33 pound payload. Now, um, I took a picture of the scales of the different builds we put on there. I think we did like 14 pounds, we did 16, I think we did a 23, 24 pound Alexa on here also. And um, so the important thing is that the telescoping arms, the side arms here, um, do work. Obviously, they slide out, and they do. Are they are long enough to accommodate quite a large build? Um, you'll see the F55 build with the raw recorder and the battery, and a matte box was quite long. So was the Alexa, and so the arm extensions are long enough. So good on them for doing that. The the telescoping arms, it's a great idea. Um, the other great thing that worked out really well is, um, and I can't stress this enough, when you're trying to balance a very heavy camera, a very big camera on here, all these worm gear um, adjustments for balancing really come into play big time because there's so much weight and it's so much so leveraged that if you didn't have the worm gear adjustments, when you're trying to slide the camera just a millimeter back or forward or left or right, you end up going too far because there's a lot of weight on, on the things and then they tend to bind up. So it becomes very hard to move things when they're very heavy. And so having all the worm gear adjustments is pretty much a must have um, in my book from here on out on any heavy duty uh, intended gimbal, which this is. So. Um, a plus on that um, it really came into play when you're doing these heavier cameras so um, I do wish this was slightly wider um, that's too bad uh, it doesn't come into play that often but there are some cameras that uh, and now that you have the capacity to you may want to put on here um, and recently I had a, a somebody uh, a production call me they're shooting a 3D movie and they, they for IMAX and they're trying to fit two cameras side by side and um, they could have used this a little bigger. So that said, it's not the end of the world for most people, just an observation. Um, the other thing of course is I found out that in some situations, um, this, this, this uh, cradle isn't big enough and luckily I have already solved that with uh, our tilt arm extensions here as you can see from here on up is a cinemilled piece so basically if you put a really tall Alexa or an Amira for example um, you can't uh, this isn't high enough this isn't big enough to fit it so you're gonna need the tilt arm extensions um, you could take the base plates off if you have a top cheese plate you might take off the top handles and maybe you can make it fit but um, especially if you want to go from studio mode on here really quickly, you don't want to derig everything off the camera. Um, having our tilt arm extensions really makes a big difference in this, uh, in this case because you'll be able to have the height here, the extra, the extra height to be able to also grab it from the top. So that's something we addressed. Um, left to right adjustment, obviously with a fatter camera, uh, you may end up with not enough adjustment here on the worm gear to um, to get the balance you need. But luckily, 
you know you can just loosen these bolts in the back and slide the whole this whole back left to right to achieve your balance with your heavier uh, payload um, so that's a good thing so now for the bad news so in all the videos that you're gonna see at the rental house um, you're gonna see I actually achieved a perfect balance in two axes in in pitch and roll okay so no problem there perfect balance no matter what camera I threw on there now pretty much every build that I'm gonna show you in the following uh, clips at the rental house um, I'm sorry to say and this is something that I could tell pretty quickly when I first uh, saw the Tilta is that the pan arm is simply not long enough um, I'm not quite sure what they were thinking um, it's pretty straightforward you know that for this the the DJI Ronin we sell arm extensions and we sell a pan extension not only do we extend the pan but we also angle it at a, at a 45 degrees to give us clearance on the tilt down so problem number one is when you have a long build the first thing that happens on here let me turn this a little sideways is if you can imagine the camera right here when it goes to So problem number one, um, if you can imagine the camera here, when you go to tilt, it hits up here. So, you know, that's kind of a big deal. Um, given that the whole reason why you're getting a gimbal like this is because maybe you're mounting it on a crane and you're using it as a remote head. Um, maybe you have it on some sort of arm or it's lifted up against somewhere. So it's really important to tilt down and unfortunately, with the way this is configured you very quickly the back of the camera hits this and so maybe you can only actually really tilt down like maybe 45 degrees so that's a big uh big thumbs down in that situation um the other problem is that pretty simply i adjusted the pen arm here all the way to the back and um it's not near nearly nearly close to balanced so while the the uh, pitch the tilt and the horizon axis is perfectly balanced the pan axis is simply just never going to be balanced with a heavy camera so a couple of couple of you know uh, obvious things is they sh if once you extend the arms you have to extend the pan. This is why, like I mentioned, for the Ronin, we make a pan arm extension and an arm extension. And so a little short-sighted of them, I mean, sort of doesn't make any sense to have arm extensions if the pan extension can't grow by the same amount. Um, the other thing that helps in this situation to get the pan axis balanced is weight back here. And unfortunately, they went with a really small 2200 milliamp battery, which sort of blew my mind doesn't make much sense. The Ronin battery is 3,400 milliamp. It's roughly the same size. Uh, I don't know if they're the same weight or not, but regardless, um, you need more weight back here with a heavy uh, camera, with a heavy payload. So um, the bottom line is you have to move, you move this all the way back. You're still nowhere near close to uh, having a pan balance. And um, I'm very sorry to report, I actually, took this apart to see if of course Cinemild can also make uh, a pan extension for the Tilta customers just like we do with the Ronin and I'm sorry to say that uh, because of the way they designed this um, there's no way we can make a uh, pan extension and mainly because of the cables so there is no slack in the cables in the Ronin once you disconnect the the pan motor there's actually a bunch of hidden cable in there that allows you to then extend the pan arm and still, you know, not have to do 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 with any deal with any uh, cabling issue. And in this case, they cut it really close, and so 
there is no way unless you want to cut the cables, resolder an extension, um, which you know that's not feasible uh, for us to do for our customers. So while mechanically we could probably come up with a solution to extend the pan, uh, since you have cables running through here that are vital to making this work, um, that's not going to work. Um, so where does that leave you? I mean. Here is a gimbal that's capable of fitting and balancing very big cameras, but not in the pan axis. So we're working on a solution and um, stay tuned. Um, I can't talk about it too much right now because frankly, we still got to figure some things out, but um, I really like the gimbal. Um, I've been doing a lot of testing on uh, uh, our upcoming vehicle mount and indeed i did go 60 70 miles an hour on the freeway with a lighter camera i'm going to do some more heavier camera car mounted tests here this week but uh, it actually has done very well it's dealt very well with g-forces acceleration and deceleration and cornering um, it hasn't lost his horizon uh, as much as the ronin does and it certainly resists the wind quite well um, so there's a lot about this gimbal that uh, I did like, and um, it's really, uh, I'm a little disappointed that, um, you know, they thought about extending the, the arms, but as you know, you move one weight this way, you've got to move the other weight that way in order to achieve a balance. Uh, now, you'll notice in the video I'm about to show, um, I am able to pan it and whatnot, um, and that's because the motors are fairly strong, and so if all you need to do is just pan really slowly, then maybe you can still use this with the pan out of balance. But as soon as I induce an angle and then I try to pan, the motors just don't have enough strength with the pan axis being out of balance to counteract that. So I just wanted to preface the videos you're about to see at the Radiant Images that make this look like this was a resounding success which uh, I wish I could say it was. Um, it was in many ways, uh, you know, like I said, it fit, it balanced. It's just the pan axis didn't balance and without, and on a gimbal, the pan, ax, the pan motor is the most hardworking motor of all of them. It's the one that has to resist when you, when you move around. If you're doing car mounted work, the wind is pushing on the pan motor. And so to not have the pan balanced perfectly on a heavy build, is a really um, it's a really bad thing and uh, I wish it was different and the, they have done a lot good with it so we are working on a solution um, I just can't say how long it's gonna be but uh, we are working on a solution uh, because I do like the gimbal um, so hang tight um, it's still big enough for you to work with many cameras it's just if you're looking to use this with a longer, heavier build, like uh, a lot of people out there, um, that is gonna be a problem, the uh, pan balance. Other than that, you know, as you're gonna see in, this, in the following video, uh, it, I was able to fit and balance pretty much every camera I threw at it, uh, lens combination, and um, I just wasn't able to balance the pan axis. But uh, surprisingly, even with the pan axis uh, out of balance, it still handles uh, panning with a big uh, camera fairly well, which is uh, bodes well for, for working in, in the wind blast in, on a car. But uh, just keep in mind that in all the videos you're about to see, the, the pan balance isn't even close to being balanced. Um, I actually was uh, testing how much weight I needed to put in order to achieve something close to a balance on the pan axis, and I can tell you it was quite a bit. So um, anyways, uh, still a great gimbal. Um, they did a lot right, but uh, we do have a problem to solve. In any case, if you have any questions, uh, reply to the thread, uh, uh, reply in the video, in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. We are doing more testing, and we are working on a few other products. Um, namely, I guess I might as well um, say right now, um, with the, with the bigger cameras that I was testing, one of the first things that became very apparent is that the stock dovetail that comes with this is very small. 
as is this top plate. So, you know, uh, not surprisingly, we are making our pro dovetail for the tilt of gravity, um, which will allow you to spin on counterweights also, and, uh, it, and also the uh, top portion, which is sort of the other half of uh, the other little note about this uh, heavy camera test that I did. I did have a lot of problems with the dovetail um, lining up on the bottom of the camera. Um, and so we are coming out with that product probably within a week or two. And um, so that's the other issue is the, uh, is the dovetail. The dovetail is just, it's just too short. And uh, it's literally uh, the length of a Ronin dovetail. So if you notice, this is how big our pro dovetail is for the large Ronin. This is the Tilta dovetail. And so needless to say, we are working on a pro dovetail for the Tilta, which we are also working uh, on, a, on a longer top uh, connector piece also. So that'll probably be out within a week or two. But uh, if you are trying to balance bigger, heavier, longer cameras, um, the dovetail being short, it does start to present a lot of problems um, because, well, really simply, might as well explain it to you guys since you guys are paying attention right now. So if, the, if you have a long lens with a matte box, the camera body is back here. It's not right here. So if you have this short dovetail and depending on where the screws are on the body of the camera, it's back here. So you see how you need more length out of it. So um, that is why we are coming out with a pro dovetail for the Tilta Gravity Gimbal. Um, uh, they really should have had a slightly longer dovetail for a gimbal that has extent ar extending arms and is intended for bigger cameras. Uh, that said, um, our dovetail will work just like the factory one. It will have the mounts for the, for the rod extensions in the front and it will also have a mounting position for our counterweights in the back. And you might say, well, why do I need counterweights if I have uh, telescoping arms? Quite frankly, if you're doing car work, with a wind blast, um, the shorter you make the rig, the less, the shorter the lever arm of the wind pushing on the motor. So in some cases, it actually makes more sense to actually counterbalance a front heavy build rather than to extend the arms. So you'll have that option if, if you wanna do that with our Pro Dovetail, but simply, simply based on the, the longer length of our Pro Dovetail, um, that will uh, also be a huge benefit. So in any case, um, check out the videos I'm about to show and you'll see uh, the re results of some of my testing with big cameras. So here we go, I just wanted to show you guys the pan motor on an extremely long, heavy build. So if you go slow, works pretty good. Now if I pan fast, you see it wag. Boom, big wag there. Now of course I'm pushing it really hard and you would never want to pan that much with this much weight. But it's actually pretty reactive for how much weight's on here and for the fact that the pan isn't perfectly balanced. All right, so we're just testing out here a 18 pound camera payload. So this is the Ingenue uh, 16 to 42. We got a Anton Bauer battery on the back and I have the bottom cradle maxed out. And so what happens is we had to add these uh, Cinemill tilt extensions that we'll be uh, shipping shortly because or else we wouldn't be able to do the top brace. And without the top brace, the camera flexes a lot. Actually, let me loosen this up and you'll see how much movement there is there. 
So it's kind of a requirement at this point is to have that top brace. And, uh, oh, I lost my balance. Let me dial that back in. And, all right, the power's off on the gimbal. You see our side to side is good. And any place we leave it, it stays, which means we are in perfect balance. And so, and it's the, the warm gears are crucial to that. But as you can see here, we have a tilt limit right there. But uh, other than that, let's fire it up. There we go. Let's tilt up here, okay. It's responding on the tilt, no problem. As you can see here. And now the pan is not in perfect balance. There's not enough adjustment. But as long as you pan slowly, it stops fairly decently. Obviously, if I go too fast, it wags quite a bit and blew right past that one. So there's a, a pan speed limit. Now, mind you, this is with 18 pounds. So far from the 30 pound limit that they claim. But. Uh, Anyways, it's working pretty decent for being out of balance in the pan axis. All right, here's a Airy Alexa with the Ingenue lens. And now, so the pan axis is totally not balanced, as you can tell. But it has enough motor strength to to pan and tilt. Now let's pan slowly. Now if you go fast it, it goes limp. But still pretty impressive. And yeah, I have a lot of fine tuning to do on the app still. And once again the pan axis is out of balance. This would need to be like that long. But anyways Well, you just saw the uh, videos there from the rental house from Radiant Images and uh, you saw it still actually responds pretty well in the tilt and the pan axis but keep in mind every single build you just saw the pan axis was grossly out of balance and so take that with a big grain of salt um, if you're in any, any sort of dynamic balance situ uh, dynamic operating situation the pan balance is just gonna it's uh, not going to be it's not going to be a good thing. I mean, you can't really operate with it out of balance. Um, so um, they did a lot good. We're working on a solution. Um, you can uh, feel free to go to our website at cinemill.com and check out the tilt extensions. Go ahead and order it if you do have a tilt uh, and our and our universal mount. Um, lots of good features there. And um, and we are very close to releasing our pro dovetail and the uh, top plate here also and um, you know we're working on other solutions we're gonna we're investigating here exactly what we're gonna do to help you get uh, proper pan balance with heavy builds and uh, we like what we see here with the tilta and um, it's very promising so feel free to uh, email me questions comment on the video and I'll do my best to get back to you and um, check out our Instagram uh, for all the latest updates on when we got new products and whatnot. But uh, I hope you got something out of this video if you were curious about the tilted gravity gimbal and um, what that 33 pay, pay, uh, pound payload actually means. And um, it, it's, it looks, all, all roads point to the fact that it can handle the payload. The problem is, since you can't balance the pen uh, axis, the pan motor is grossly overworked in that situation. So a lot good, some bad news, but uh, overall we think maybe we should be able to get a solution going for this, which will make it work with these big cameras. Until then, there's still a lot you can do with this gimbal. Um, and uh, it is way better um, on a vehicle mount than um, the, a lot of other gimbals out there that we have tested. And so we're still very excited about it and you should be too and um so 
basically, um, I hope you, uh, you got some information out of this. Once again, uh, feel free to visit our website and uh, get a hold of me if you have any questions. All right, thank you. See you on set.